Well, good morning, Downsview. It is Wednesday morning, relatively early. Looks like it might be a bit of a rainy day today, but a special announcement to begin our time together today. Our Good Friday service will be an online service as usual. It will not be on Zoom. So <clears throat> for the Good Friday service, it will premiere at 11 o'clock on Good Friday. Just go to downsviewbaptistchurch.com and find where it says click the Sunday link and that will take you to the Facebook page and there you'll find a link for our YouTube station or just go directly to our YouTube channel where we've been watching videos for a year now and you'll find the video there. We will have a number of people involved in the service, but we have decided against Zoom. So the Good Friday service will just essentially be as usual and continue for Easter Sunday. Do bring in your reservations, please. We are filling up quickly. The 930 service is full. The 11 o'clock service, I understand, as of yesterday, has a little bit of room left for it, but we're not absolutely certain. And if we need to add an extra service, I need to know sooner than later. So please uh, go to downsviewbaptistchurch.com, click on the reservation tab there, and we'll be able to take your reservation for the glorious Easter Sunday morning service. We have confirmed we will have some uh, live worship music on Easter Sunday at both 9.30 and 11. Andrea and Larney are so very kind to not only have prepared music for the online service on Good Friday, but they will be live and they will be willing to stay for both of those services, 9.30 and 11, on Easter Sunday morning. So we're really grateful for that and really looking forward to worshiping the Lord with you in person. Today, for a few moments, let's just look at, again, these days leading up to the Lord Jesus' final hours on the cross on Good Friday and with his vindication of all that he is on Easter Sunday. Those days in between, one of the events, another of the events that we've been exploring this week is found in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of Mark in verse 41. And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury, he's in the temple now, and he watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box because they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Very interesting how you see the way that Jesus computes value. He's, let, he's there in the temple in this familiar scene that you know of, and sometimes the uh, uh, account is referred to as the widow's mite. That's just a, a small copper penny, as he said, just this tiny little amount of money relative to those who were putting into the offering box. And he says, she has put in more than all of them because for she gave out of her poverty they gave out of their abundance. They gave what was easy to give. She gave what was extraordinarily difficult. They gave what they had left over. She gave out of what she actually continued to need, all she had to live on. Now I've heard people criticize this example before and say how foolish that is for someone like this to make herself so needy to put in all she she has. I mean, that's just dumb. That's just foolish. That just that doesn't make any sense because now somebody else is going to have to take care of her, right? So, you know, this is really not wise stewardship like the rest of us who give out of what we have left over and the extra that we have so that we're not a burden and needy to people. Well, interestingly enough, we find ourselves arguing with Jesus' math, don't we? And we don't often win when we do that. <laughs> We're not going to come out on top when it comes to the understanding of how things should be valued that we think we know better than Jesus. But you see, because we think we know better than Jesus, that's exactly why we operate the way that we do, don't we? We, we do that because we're so sure that we get it better than Jesus does. 
we're, we're always quite certain when we give out of our abundance that that's the right way to give because the Lord Jesus can't possibly be accurate in his evaluation that someone who gave with such sacrificial intent and action they just couldn't possibly be be right it just doesn't make any economic sense to us brothers and sisters in christ as you have known the abundant provision of god in your life over the years have you not realized like so many of us have that god's math is not people's math <laughs> god's way of calculating value and worth is just not the way we do it and we're the ones that have to change we're the ones that have to get our head around the fact that to give all she had to live on monetarily didn't mean that the provision of god wouldn't give her all she needed to actually continue to live on god's provision for us is not stymied by our generosity you are not going to go without what you need to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish because you're generous I'm in a position at the church to help distribute love gifts to people every once in a while because people want to do it anonymously and recently we received some funds through the church that were to bless uh, another portion of the church and I don't think we need to do it anonymously to be honest with you I think you give opportunities for people to be thankful and yet I realize people are taking steps not to be prideful and so fair enough before the Lord you know, that's that's an option it's not a requirement it's not wrong to let someone know you've been generous and, and kind to them but to see that happening again this week and to realize that out of someone's generous heart to give in a way that shows that the person is relying upon the provision of God I, I just I, I get pretty emotional when I think about that I know how foolish I've been with God's money over the years I know how responsible my beautiful wife has been who's worked so hard as a nurse over all that time but both Pam and I realize that it is God's provision that has provided for us again and again over the years in ways that just on one hand don't make any sense, but and with a divine perspective make all the sense in the world. We just we understand that's how it will will work. And I want you to think about that as you're these days leading up to the sacrificial giving of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't give monetarily. But he gave all that he had not to live on but he recognized that that's what his life had been given to him for was to give his life as a ransom for many and as we see that and we we meditate and we think about that in these coming days friends one of the great truths of that is to understand that the picture of this widow giving all that she had to live on is a confidence in God's willingness to provide for her needs. And, and look around. And look around for opportunities to give thanks to God for how he's provided for you beyond what you and I have asked or imagined. And then look for opportunities to look for just this kind of generosity to provide for a church family to provide for people within the church family, to provide for mission opportunities that extend out of our church family, to look around and see how can we just be an encouragement to give, not out of just the extra that we have left over. These folks who are coming to the temple, Jesus is not saying, you know, they gave in such abundance and that's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. He's saying someone who gave sacrificially was better it was more than what these other folks gave which means there's more we can give not just with a number behind it or a bigger number but a more focused heart concern for generosity that is sacrificial and will cause the pleasure of God to look down and say well done that's that's what I do for people I save. I change their hearts like that. That's what happens when I grip someone's heart. 
They're generous and joyfully generous. That's what happens when I save people. I change them from their core and I change their calculus of the value of everything in life. And suddenly this thing is more than that thing. Even though in human arithmetic, there's no way you could make that calculation. Well, again, friends, I encourage you to continue to think through these truths of what Jesus involved himself with in the days between Palm Sunday and leading into Good Friday. We will see you online, Lord willing, on Palm, or on Good Friday at 11 o'clock on our regular online YouTube channel. And then get those reservations in so that we can have a seat for you on Easter Sunday. Cheers, friends.